Today, I'm so excited. This is going to be my first spooky vlog. And this video is kindly being sponsored by Zyro, and I will talk about that later in the video. I've been getting a lot of questions the past month if I am participating in Spookathon, if I'm daily vlogging a Spookathon, what am I doing instead? So if you don't know, every year I participate in a readathon called Spookathon. I always daily vlog it and it's a lot of fun and I do like spooky themed things. So this year Spookathon is not happening, in case you didn't know. And so I kind of had to figure out what I'm gonna do instead. So my alternative to daily vlogging Spookathon is that I'm going to be doing spooky vlogs and for the last two weeks of October so starting when this video goes up I will be uploading videos every other day all with different spooky themes sort of daily vlogging I'm filming these ahead of time so I can get like ahead of editing I have a bunch of different books that I want to read different kind of spooky video ideas and I'm really really excited for this first video I thought it would be fun to kind of do a spin on the reading highest rated blank series that I do where normally I pick three books on my TBR in a certain genre or category that are highly rated. So I thought it would be fun to do like a mini version for horror books. So I was looking at my horror TBR shelf and I noticed most of them have low ratings, like lower than normal ratings. And that definitely makes sense because I feel like horror is the type of genre that you're either going to love a book that you read or you're going to hate it. It really elicits strong emotions and any type of book that pulls out strong emotions from people is going to have very polarizing opinions. So I decided instead of picking the highest rated horror on my TBR, I was going to pick the lowest. So if we go look at my horror shelf on Goodreads, I'm going to sort it based on average rating. I already know what the book is because <laughs> obviously like I've planned this video and I bought the book for it. But for the sake of this video, let's just go through what I did. So I sorted it by average rating and I scrolled all the way down to the bottom. And the book that we have is Bunny by Mona Awad. It has a 3.50. And then if we look in the rating details, so it has about like 45% ratings, three stars and under. So this is a book that I have always seen people read, but I've never actually heard someone describe what this is about. And I know that everyone who reads it says that it is wild. So let's just kind of, I'm interested to look at some of the reviews for this and see what people say. Elias said, if Mean Girls and Alice in Wonderland fell in love with the craft, I like the sound of that. If you like pretentious people and clicks and sacrificial cults, exploding heads, Gabby said it's the strangest book that she's ever read. Mean Girls meets Frankenstein meets the secret history meets Jennifer's body. I'm even more confused now. <laughs> But I'm excited. Jennifer's Body is one of my all-time favorite movies, so anything compared to that, I'm gonna love. Let's see. Oh my god, all the reviews are just so funny. This was bonkers. I loved every second of it. WTF. This book was wild. This book is like a bad car crash. Nobody knows what they just read. Nobody knows what this is. Everybody thinks it's weird. So I'm excited. So I am just going to spend today reading this. Hopefully it is as wild as everybody says and I'm very interested to see where I fall among this spectrum of people either thinking it's so weird and crazy that it's five stars or people thinking that it's so weird and crazy that it's one star. All right, so I didn't explain at all what this is about because I genuinely don't know. I have not read the synopsis but I'm gonna do that right now. So if you don't want to know what this is about, you can skip this part, but I'm just going to kind of read this and we'll discover together what this is about. So it says, Samantha Heather Mackey couldn't be more of an outsider in her small, highly selected MFA program at an elite New England university. A scholarship student who prefers the company of her dark imagination to that of most people, she's utterly repelled by the rest of her fiction writing cohort, a clique of unbearably twee witch girls who call each other bunny and seem to move and speak as one. But everything changes when Samantha receives an invitation to the bunny's fabled smut salon and finds herself inexplicably drawn to the front door, ditching her only friend Ava in the process. As Samantha plunges deeper and deeper into the bunny's sinister yet saccharine world, beginning to take part in the ritualistic off-campus workshop where they conjure their monstrous creations, the edges of reality start to blur. Soon her friendships with Ava and the bunnies will be brought into a deadly collision. Okay, this sounds 
really interesting. I'm totally getting the comparisons to Mean Girls and The Craft and Frankenstein that I saw in the Goodreads reviews. So I'm very excited to start this. <laughs> for an hour and I got to uh oh I closed the book and I didn't mark my spot okay I got to chapter 12 which is um not page 95 so I've read a good amount I wish I was filming my reaction for this last chapter that I read because it got so weird and I literally stopped at probably the craziest spot I mean it's been very weird but like this chapter that i just read huh like so weird i'm gonna try to be very vague because i don't even know how to explain what's going on in this book but essentially we're following this girl who goes to an elite school and she's in a, an mfa program and in one of her creative writing workshops or classes there is a group of girls that she refers to as the bunnies they're a clique they're very bizarre she kind of describes them as like being like barbie dolls and they all call each other bunny and they seem to kind of like move as one and speak as one and they're very strange and at the start of the book they invite her to one of their smut salon events and from there she kind of finds herself falling into their world there's a lot of references or like like small references to Alice in Wonderland um so like literally the last one of the last lines of the chapter that I just read was I fall to the earth I fall and fall and fall it's a long way down which is obviously like referencing Alice falling into Wonderland and then the girls being called bunnies she's following a bunny a white bunny like there's just a lot of Alice in Wonderland references but as of right now I am so lost and like not in a bad way I'm just like I have so many theories I don't know what's going on is is this real is it happening in her head is this a metaphor for something is this actually happening like I don't no. And I'm trying not to read too much into th anything or like trying to think too hard about what's going on because I'm going off the reviews for this book of everybody generally seems to not know what is going on. I'm kind of not expecting to get answers. So I'm really trying hard not to think too much about it and just like let it take me on a ride. But so far, I'm really enjoying it. I really like the writing. It's I definitely feel like with the way that it's written, there's a lot that's like being untold or like misleading. I don't know, like I'm conflicted on whether or not what's happening is what's actually happening or if it's like the main character this is how like they're interpreting things in their mind or if it's a metaphor for something else that's happening I don't know you guys okay I could sit here and like theorize about this for so long but I'm gonna take a little lunch break and then I will come back to reading all right I got my food I'm having oh that looks so good I'm having Panda Express I haven't had it in so long so I thought I would treat myself um and I'm watching Shit's Creek. This is now the third time that I've watched this show this year. Definitely, if you have not watched this show, you 1000% need to. It is so good. All right, so I just read a section that I don't know if I've ever read something written this way, but it was written in first person plural. So basically the narrator is describing themselves as a collection as we so like we did this we felt this and it's very weird it's so like he is brushing our hair he is saying we are so beautiful we are not bored in the slightest ever like i don't know that i've ever read anything written that way so it's really interesting and yeah i it's weird i'm kind of going back and forth on how i feel about this i've never really read a book that has made me so uncertain, 
so like questioning everything questioning what i'm reading questioning my own reality like <laughs> I'm just questioning everything and I kind of like that because I find that not to be like oh like I'm always able to predict things I feel like it's very very rare that I read a book that I can't see exactly where it's going and I cannot see where this is going I have no clue like every single chapter goes in a new direction that I could not have predicted and so it's kind of like keeping me on my toes and I really like that. So I thought it would be fun if in every single one of these videos I recommended you guys a horror or thriller movie to watch. So the first movie that I wanted to recommend you guys isn't actually horror, but it's one of my favorites, so I really wanted to recommend it. It's a psychological sci-fi thriller, I guess, is how I would categorize it. So if you're not a horror fan, this might be the only movie recommendation I'm gonna give that you could enjoy. But the movie is called Coherence. It kind of, in a way, reminds me of Bunny, not in plot, or themes at all but in how bizarre it is and how it really plays with like your perception of reality and it's such like a mind-bending crazy wild ride so I definitely recommend going into this movie not watching a trailer not looking up anything about it because it's really one of those movies that like you just have to get on the ride let it take you where it's gonna take you but to give you like a little bit of what this movie is about Essentially, it follows a group of friends who are having a dinner party on the night of like this cosmic event. There is a comet passing over Earth and it causes some strange things to happen. This movie is just so amazing. It's one of those movies that, like I said, really messes with your mind and I feel like it's such a fun movie to watch with other people because you could have there's like endless conversations that you can have about this movie and it's one of those that you could watch 10 times and get something new out of it every time or realize something every time when I first watched this movie I kind of had this perception of it that it was like a d-list movie there wasn't really a budget on it it was filmed on a single camera I didn't really know who any of the actors were so I was like I kind of had this judgment of what the movie was gonna be. It was filmed in a very unique way. So there was essentially no script and no crew. The director who was also the writer had all of the actors come to his home and he filmed it there with just the actors and there was no script. So each actor got like one page of notes about their own character and like a little bit of backstory and that's it. So all of the reactions to things that happened throughout the film were genuine reactions from the actors because they had no clue what was going on. And so it is just such a great movie. I definitely recommend watching it. I think it's on Amazon Prime or at least it used to be. But if you're looking for something that is really gonna mess with your mind and there's no way you're gonna see where it's going and it's gonna have so many twists and turns, definitely check this out. <laughs> Hi. Oh, what? You're so cute. <laughs> oh, thank you. Don't. This lip gloss tastes like strawberries and he always wants to eat it. I finished Bunny. So, <laughs> I am very conflicted on this book. I've never read a book that made me feel this way where I feel like I could equally argue a five-star review and a one-star review. I don't know if I loved this or if I hated it, but I do know that I was fully entranced the entire time. I never knew what was going on and it made me feel so many emotions. And like on the scale of weird books, this is definitely the weirdest book that I've ever read. But like, I'm so conflicted. I think that I loved it. I also think I hated it. Like, I don't know. I've never felt this way about something. I don't even know how to put it into words. Like how can I equally love something and hate it? That doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't make sense, but it's how I feel. I definitely think that there's a lot of reasons that I can sit here and tell you not to read this. Like, there's tons of animal cruelty. There's tons of body horror. There's definitely a lot of problematic language, but like in the context of the book, all of it makes sense because we're following complex, definitely unlikable characters who do messed up things. So like there's definitely like problematic parts of the book that I was like, oof, yikes. But like, do I think the book is problematic? 
no. I definitely think it's like a case of the difference between a book saying something and making a point about something versus characters having problematic opinions. So like the characters are saying certain things, but I don't think that's what the book is saying, if that makes sense. So yeah, like, I don't know. It's really interesting to me how the one star reviews for this book and the five star reviews are saying the same thing. Everybody agrees. This book is weird. This book does not make sense. This book is confusing. But I think it's just a matter of like, do you like this kind of weird or not? And I do, <laughs> apparently. So yeah, I, I'm giving it five stars. No other rating feels right to me. I think that of any book that I've ever read in my life, this was the strangest and made me feel the weird, like, <laughs> I, like I literally can't even describe the feeling that it gave me. So it's definitely five stars. I'm just like, really glad that I read this and now I'm curious what else this author has written. Um, if you guys have read any of this author's other books and you think that I would like them, let me know. So that brings me to the sponsor for today's video, which is Zyro. Zyro is a website builder that makes it extremely easy for anyone to create amazing websites and launch online stores that sell. It is extremely easy to build a website from their designer-made templates because they have a very simple drag-and-drop editing with no coding or design skills necessary to make something that looks great. Zyro is the most affordable option on the market and you can easily manage all of your business in one single place. And in the description of this video, there will be a link and a coupon code, Riley Marie where you will get 30% off any of the Zyro plans. I tried it out myself to see just how easy it was to build a website and it really is as simple as picking a template that you like and an aesthetic that you like and then dragging and dropping anything you want into it. This really quick website that I built for my channel took me like 15 minutes and there's so much more that I could do to it and more features that I could add. This was just like a really quick sample that I made to show you guys how simple it is. I think that this would be a really great way for anyone who is an author to make their own websites for their books or if you're an artist trying to show off your artwork or literally there's endless ways that you could use Zyro to create your own personal websites. So yeah, like I said, there is a link in the description and a coupon code for you to get 30% off. And thank you to Zyro for sponsoring this video. So that is going to be the end of today's spooky vlog. I hope you guys like what I am doing this year for my spooky videos instead of the spookathon daily vlogs because I know that a lot of people really like those videos but I'm excited for what I'm doing this year and I hope you guys like all of the content that I am bringing you. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye! <laughs> Loki thinks I said bye to him. I'm not going anywhere. Aww. <laughs>